Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hi guys, Sue here at 1A Auto, and today we're going to be changing the PCV valve and the hose on our 2.3 liter 2007 Mazda 6. So we're going to drain the coolant on our 07 Mazda 6, and to do that, the drain plug for the radiator is right here in the center. They make a nice little cutout for you. You can use a Phillips or a flathead screwdriver. I prefer a flathead, and I just twist that plastic uh, petcock right out. Make sure you have a catch pan ready to go. Look at that. We'll just hold that up there until the heavy flow of it comes down. Before I reinstall the radiator drain, the petcock, I pulled out the gasket, the O-ring gasket that goes with it, because I want to seat that actually on the, on the plug. I don't want that sitting up in there because I can. It will end up. It could end up sitting sideways and cause a leak. So, got my flathead screwdriver in. I'm just gonna start this. There you go. Before we start, we're gonna disconnect the negative cable. It's a good practice to do whenever you work on an engine. Prior to, we're gonna be disconnecting sensors, the fuel line. So you want to make sure that's disconnected. I'm going to pinch down on the mass airflow sensor connector and release it from the mass airflow sensor. It just pushes in here on this airbox cover, just guide the, the harness out. We need to disconnect the air injection hose, so these two blue tabs, they have ears on them, so you squeeze them together and twist the hose off. I'm going to disconnect the clamp on the throttle body to the air box. That air tube is connected to the air filter housing, and that is a 10 millimeter socket I'm using. Just need to loosen it up enough so that we can wiggle that hose off. Once the air hose is disconnected from the throttle body, this whole air box is mounted on rubber bushings down below. Just grab it firmly and lift up. To uh, lift up the engine cover, it's just a plastic cover that has rubber prongs on it. We're just going to firmly lift it up, set that aside. These are the rubber bushings and the clips. Before doing the intake manifold, you can see that this has been a vehicle that's sat outside and some chipmunks enjoyed themselves, or mice. I'm going to clean this up because we're going to remove that intake. So now I'm going to disconnect the two connectors for the intake runner controls, and then I have the injector harness that I'm going to release. So you do that by each of these injector connectors right here, that tab. So we're going to, to access it, I'm just going to disconnect everything I need to get it out of my way. So push that tab back and lift up, there's one, do that to all four injectors. We're going to disconnect the main injector harness or intake harness right here. Push down on this tab, push it down, pull. Now I want to get this off of the intake. Let's see how this is. I'm going to pull down on this tab, see if it slides out. There we go. And we have 
we'll just retape that on. The engine heat makes things break down after a while. Okay, we got one more right here. So now we have the fuel injection harness. So we're gonna disconnect the emission line down here. Let's see what we got. Disconnect this plastic piece. Get it out of there. I think it's a lock on it. See, so it's got the lock. Set that aside. And I think it's a matter of just pulling it off. I like to reassemble that so I don't lose the lock. And secondly, when I go to attach it, I just have to snap it on. I don't have to do anything with the lock. Now I've got the another vacuum hose here. Let's see. I think we have another red tab. I'm gonna get a small screwdriver for that one. So we're gonna pull this red tab out, I think. Let's see, it's broken it all on the other side. Nope, there's no cut open to that. Hmm. So the red clip here is to push down and release. So I'm taking a pair of needle nose and I'm riding it right on the red plastic on both sides, pushing it down, pull up. Disregard that to the side. Now we have the fuel line, same as that other red clip. I'm gonna just back it off completely, pull it out, and slide that down. I'm gonna reassemble it. So when it comes time to Installing it, I don't have to worry about that. Okay, let's see, we're going this way. There we go. Disconnect the fuel rail from the two mounting bolts, 10 millimeter socket. And lose it. <laughs> oh my God. I see it, thank goodness. Okay. To disconnect the fuel rail with the injectors, you want to keep them intact. So it's a firm pull. I like to hold onto the injector while I rock it back and forth. I really don't want it to come out of the rail side. Sometimes you can spray a little penetrating spray or like a, a brake clean spray just to get that O-ring loosened up. There we go. So there's the fuel injector all four injectors with the rail. Make sure you get a catch pan when you pull the injector rail out because the gas is gonna all be stuck in that chamber. You don't wanna spill that on the ground. I'm just gonna let it sit in there, continue draining. So you're gonna disconnect the intake. There are several bolts as the ones up top. You can see obviously one, two, and then three. And then if you look down in between, there's a little access hole right here in the center of the intake. There's one directly here underneath. That's what that access hole is for. And then there's gonna be one underneath this one. And you can go through the brake right here and the same with the front. Go through the brake. And then there is one in the far corner behind this power steering, right about there. I'm gonna start with the center one. And I've got a combination here of 10 millimeter deep socket, uh, four inch extension with a one inch. So you have to go into the fan shroud, back it into the fan shroud, and then line it up with that access hole. Then fish it through. Use your hand. Once you get it in, so you'll feel the the bolt once you get it connected to it. This might take some time, but 
you're basically fishing without seeing what you're doing. There we go. Let's see if it's attached to the socket. That would be really nice, but it's not. <laughs> I fished the extension with the socket in behind the power steering. You can kind of see through the plastic of the intake, the bolt. I'll break that one free. It doesn't take much to break them free. Once they're free, you can actually take them off by with your fingers. Now that's all the way out, let's see if we can guide it out. If not, we'll use the magnet again. If it drops, it's gonna drop. Okay, I'm gonna fish the magnet down there and grab that one. I'm gonna get the ones that are out in the open. We can see. That's unmistakably for the long one over there. And there's one underneath the throttle body. I could feel that with my fingers and my hands, so I didn't really uh, have to look hard for that. You'll see, you'll feel it. There's another long one. So the two long ones stay together, they're for the throttle body section. Before I continue on the bolts, I want to disconnect this harness because it's not going to go with the intake. So I want to get this out of the way while I have the firmness of the intake mounted. I just use a pair of needle nose and squeeze the two tabs if it's possible. If not, sometimes you can push down on them. not easy for me to get to the rest so hopefully once the intake is released and it starts to lift up we'll continue on disconnecting the harness. I've got one more hidden down it's right here underneath on the second Uh, that's down in there too, so I'm going to use the magnet just to get that out of there. So there's one more bolt for the intake located down below. It's easy access actually. It's right there. 10 millimeter socket. I'm going to break that free, lower it back down. Okay, I'm going to give it a grasp, firm it grasp and give it a pull and get nowhere. So it's stuck on there pretty good. So I just took a little flathead screwdriver and I, I went over here and I just wiggled it free. Okay, now I'm going to reach down below before I can pull the, heart, the intake all the way up and I've got to disconnect 
this little harness body clip to the intake. It's not easy to get in there. And I have to disconnect the this connector right here. Let's see if I can push in on that tab and get that out of the way first. connector out of the way. Actually there's one more connector I can see right here. I'm just going to squeeze that tab and pull it out. Let's see how much movement we get to wiggle this out. What do we get going on over here? Okay we have, looks like the knock sensor connector is attached right here. So reach down. Get that out of the way. A lot of connectors. These, this harness has a nice little plastic clips that I can squeeze. See? There we go. Okay, that's unplugged. Let's see what we got. Much more movement. Okay, that is the knock sensor, so I'm gonna disconnect it right here. Let's see if I can move my way down this way. Now with the intake separated, I see the emission tube that has to come out from the head. So it's a 22 millimeter wrench. I'm going to unthread that. It's going to come out with the intake and I'm going to have to reverse procedure when it comes to installing. Leave the tube in the intake and start it before I mount the intake to the body, the head. Now with that in intake out of the way, the uh, mission tube, I'm sorry, I can lift it up enough to see what else might be holding it down? We've got one PVC hose connected on the bottom. So now I can lift the intake up and I can see that the PVC hose, PCV hose, is rotted and soft and collapsing right here. And that's the last thing I have to disconnect. So this hose is gonna have to be replaced so now, with hopefully everything disconnected, let's see if we can get this intake out. We get another nightmare. <laughs> One more connector right here, hose connector. I'll use my pliers. Disconnect that from the body. These are the squeeze tabs. Squeeze and push the connector through. I'm gonna take both of them out. Okay, thank you. And there is your intake. Once we got the intake off, we accessed the knock sensor, which we replaced, you can watch a video on. And now, now I'm gonna replace the PCV valve and the hose. To get this PCV valve off, you have to, there's a two tabs. There's a tab here, an identical one on the other side. There is no turning, no twisting, don't, it doesn't screw out. Ideally, if you have a, a pick or a small flat-headed screwdriver, I'm gonna show you how to do it, hopefully without breaking it. So we're gonna grab where the ear is, the tab, the plastic underneath, and I'm just going to lift and wedge the screwdriver up underneath it. There we go. I'll come over here and see if I can get this on. There we go. So now that plastic piece came off in one whole piece. Didn't crack, didn't break. Now we can set that aside and pull this PCV elbow. There we go.
So here's our old PCV valve, and it has this O-ring style thing on it. It's not torn, it's in good shape. So I'm gonna put this O-ring gasket back on, the new one, and I'm just gonna place it down inside there. Let's feel its seat. Now I'm gonna grab that ring that we just took off. Gonna make sure that the, the clips seem to be a little bit offset. See how those, they're more forward than they are in the back. So make sure you get it lined up the correct way. And we'll just click it down on. There you go. We ended up getting a new hose. So I'll show you the new hose and the old hose. So here's our old hose, and this is a great reason to repair and replace it. It gets hot underneath there because it's the plastic intake covers it, and it's right against the block. So this rubber breaks down over mileage and has a crack in it. It gets really soft. So as the vacuum from the engine has a vacuum demand on the PCV valve, it'll collapse this hose, and then we'll have a restriction in the flow. And that could cause rough idle, lack of power, so we end up getting a new hose and a new PCB valve, and we'll install this now. So before we uh, clean the intake and reinstall the intake, I'm just gonna put the new hose on the PCB valve and uh, line it up the way it's supposed to be. So it's attached like this on the bottom. And the new clamp has this beautiful attachment. Just gonna it comes pre-squeezed, pop a term, and this red tab, just pull on it. And there it is. So now we're ready to remove our old gaskets, clean our intake, and then we'll reverse procedure install. So as we lower this in, we have so much to connect to it before we attach it to the, the actual body of the head. Um, that PCV hose down there, I hope you can get a good angle on it, right here. I gotta reconnect that to the actual intake and make sure it's fully seated and the clamp will come off at the same time. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna get an additional light because I really can't see it in there. I just want to make sure it's, it's seated completely on the plastic. And it looks like I need to go more. There we go. Okay, now we're seated. Pull on that red tab, hopefully without hurting my fingers. Okay, now we get the PCV. So I'm gonna connect my knock sensor connector. So okay. now with my knock sensor connected, I'm gonna connect all these lovely little body clips to the intake. This one goes like here. There we go. Now I can slide that into place. And on this side, I'm going to reconnect. My two connectors down here. I'm going to reconnect this one and that one. This one just pushes on. Same with this one. You'll hear it click. I can see. I think it's going to go like this. Yep, there we go. Perfect. Uh, now I've got all my connectors connected and I am ready to line up my first intake bolt. See what I almost forgot? The emission tube that goes into the chamber over here that we have to thread in by hand and tighten before we bolt up the intake. This is a 22 millimeter wrench. It's just an extra uh, emission port that pushes the air down deeper into the chamber. 
I'm just gonna tighten it right up, 22 millimeter. Once this is tightened, then I can line, install my eight intake bolts. That's tight. I'm gonna support the uh, intake up and I'm just gonna install in any order because I'm not gonna tighten them yet. I'm just hand starting them so that I can support this up in the air. Two long ones, two long intake bolts. Remember we went over by the throttle body plate and the other uh, six short ones go throughout the intake. I'm also always keeping an eye on my gaskets to make sure they're still all lined up in the visual divots that I can see that the rubber pokes through. It's not uncommon for one of them to come undone and unseated. So right before I torque everything down, I'm gonna give it a quick visual. There's all the rubber still lined up perfectly. These are the easy ones <laughs> to start. The bottom ones, you can't even really see them. Not even snug it in, I'm just bottoming out. Okay, now that with those, the top part supported, I'm ready to do the magic and guide these, the lower bolts that you can't see, into place. So I'm gonna install the long bolts, the bottom one over here on the throttle body. I'm gonna squeeze my arm down underneath there. <laughs> Hope for the best. And get the bottom three in. Then our last one is, the car goes up in the air and it's down below. That's the easiest one of all. Okay, so sometimes when you're installing a bolt on, the, on an extension into a place where you can't put your hands, is an old fashioned, uh, way it was taught to me over 30 years ago, old timer. He put thick grease on there and uh, covered the head of the bolt. So now when the socket goes on there, squeeze it on. Causes like a, a nice thick bond. So I have a little bit more wiggle room of tipping it without it falling out. Did it. Wonderful. I'm just going to put on my little one inch extension so I can start it. So the last one on the top is that access porthole that I showed you when we were moving. I'm just gonna put a lot of the paste on there because I really don't want this to fall off. So what I did originally was I went into the fan shroud where the fan goes. Access port because you cannot see. I 
think I saw with my mirror, I put a light. So now we've raised our vehicle, we're putting the last intake bolt on, the easiest one. I'm going to really snug that down a little bit. That is going to be the last bolt that I'm going to torque. I'm going to definitely torque all the ones that meet the head for the actual intake. And then I'll come down here and torque this one. So snugging this is probably the best thing to do first before we torque the top. There we go, just bottomed right out. So now I'm going to lower it and torque the top. Now we have all eight bolts in our intake on the head and we're going to torque them. Torque spec is 12 to 14 foot pounds. So I have my quarter inch torques, torque wrench here and I'm going to go from the center out. When you torque anything you always want to go from the center out most of the time unless they specify, specify something else. Two more down the end here. We have that one down below. So once we torque that one down, we're going to come up and you just do the procedure one more time to pick up any slack that might have caused from torquing. Just torque it twice. And then we have the last one down here on the bottom. Okay. So the intake is torqued down and we're just going to give it one more quick pass on the top and ready to attach the accessories to it. So now I'm just going to reattach the harness with the little clips that clip in the ears of the plastic intake. And there's probably five overall. So now I'm going to clean the throttle body before I reattach it. Here we have our throttle body and it's an electronic throttle body. So in here is an actuator motor. You do not want to push on the butterfly ever. You don't want to. You'll basically take the timing 
this, this is timed with the pedal inside, so you cannot force this open. The gears can get messed up. So I'm gonna make sure I tip it and leave the electronic part on the top. I don't want any throttle cleaner getting into that. I just wanna clean the seat of where the butterfly sits and rides on the throttle body. I have a neoprene brush and I can get some of the fluid in there, really get that scrubbed. Like I said, as much as you want to force this butterfly open, you cannot do that. Strongly do not recommend it. Let's turn it around, see if I can get it from the front. It looks like chocolate. <laughs> this side one last time. All right, I'm gonna let that dry. Probably take a nice clean towel to it. I'm gonna put the gasket on, the throttle body. I'm gonna line up the plastic guided little tabs I have here. Hopefully yours doesn't fight you like this one. It's fighting me. Okay, she sits like this. Let's make sure we get everything that we need out of the way. We do. So that's gonna go down in there, like that. Four mounting bolts. The torque on this is 101 inch pounds, not foot, inch pounds. Big difference, difference between braking and tightening. <laughs> so it's 101 inch pounds. I have my torque wrench all ready to go. Eight millimeter socket. And I'm just gonna go diagonally across, let it bottom out. Both are bottomed, and I'm gonna go back this way. Then I'm gonna to torque it to the 101 inch pounds. Now I'm gonna connect my coolant hose on the front part where the radiator is. And then there's one in the back, which is a loop style. It's like a U. Get the hoses all the way on, and then I'll get my pliers and I'll squeeze the clamps on. That one's 
way down in there, huh? Sometimes you have to guide up, up with your finger. Connect the emission tube to the intake. That's the fuel line. It's going to go on the fuel rail. It goes to the air box. Let's see. There it is. Just push that down. It's like finger hold. Okay, so all the hoses are on. Now I'm going to install the fuel rail and then the injector harness. Okay, so we have our injector rail. I'm going to line it up. And these are the, the O-rings. And in this case, I inspected them all. They're in good shape. They're not dry rotted. There's no cracks. If there was, I would replace them. I'm going to install this injector rail. And what I like to do is I will use throttle cleaner and I just spray it where the o-rings are give it a quick push down and they fall into place now we can install the injector bolts so it's two mounting bolts and they go right into the aluminum ears this is a 10 millimeter socket it's an 8 millimeter bolt but we care about the socket more the torque on this is 15 to 19 foot-pounds. It's pretty important definitely to torque down the fuel rail, believe it or not, because you want to make sure those injectors are seated straight across. Another thing I like to make a practice of whenever you work on your injectors or move the injectors, uh, just power the car up, just turn the key into the on position, then turn it off and then turn it back on. And that way the pump builds up pressure in the rail. And if there is a injector that's not seated properly, um, you'll see a small fuel leak. It's better than running it and discovering it. So there's a 10 millimeter socket and it's 19 foot pounds. Give it a double check. Perfect. Now I'm going to connect this fuel line got a self locker on it. You just push it on and it'll click. Get a tug. Looking good. So now I'm going to go get my injector harness and reassemble that. Okay. So because the vehicle is an 07, the harness is pretty well fitted <laughs> to the way it uh, used to be. So I'm going to connect some to one, two, three, and then four. I'm going to put the plastic eyelets in where they were located. Now this is the electronic throttle body connector. That clicks down and push that red tab down. That's a locker. And that went on that bolt for guidance. Here we have the main injector harness. This is a guide. Guides on this plastic ear. It snaps on. So now we just have the intake runner solenoids. And we're ready to install the airbox. See how this thing runs. So you can see the three ears that push into the rubber bushings. And uh, that's just going to pop right in. If you have any 
lubricating spray like a um, penetrating spray or anything, just give it a shot to the rubber bushings. It'll help the plastic just get snapped down a lot easier. Now I have the air intake hose on the, to the throttle body. I'm going to slide that on. And now I know that these are all lined up. I'm going to just snap it down. And that's how easy it was because I pre-sprayed the, the rubber. Here is the emission tube from the valve cover. Line up the blue box. Just snap it on. And then we're going to just tighten the clamp on the throttle body and then plug in our mass airflow sensor. So the clamp on the uh, air breather tube is a 10 millimeter. You can use, also use a Phillips. Just snug that down. Then we have a connector for the mass airflow sensor. Gonna connect that, let it snap. Click. <laughs> it did snap in, you just didn't hear it. And this actually has a guide. Put it on the other side of that clamp. But see the little ear here? So they want you to put that harness in, which is a good idea. Stop it from rubbing and wear into the wires. So there you have it, we're all set. Now we're gonna add coolant after working on the cooling system. We're gonna make sure the pet cock was closed, which I've already done. And now I'm gonna add my coolant. As I've already pre-mixed it. I'm going to bring it up to the top of the visual part of the radiator, not to the top of the neck. I want to bring it right up to here and I can see that straight through. And then I'm going to top off my overflow tank. I'm just going to bring it to the cold mark. There's a line here. It's already got coolant in it, so I'm not, I'm not going to have to top it off. It's a little bit above the cold line, which is where I'm going to leave it, because as I run this, it'll self-burp. Bring it to temp. Once it's to temp, shut the car down, let it sit for a little bit, a couple hours if you can, and check your overflow, and it should be down at the low mark. Perfect. And when it's warm and hot, it'll be up at the high mark. You don't want it down at the low mark when it's hot. You want it up at the high mark. So. Uh, Let's start it up and run it. Put the cap on, then you can start the car and run it. About 45 minutes before the fans come on. Once the fans come on, you could shut your car down, let it cool down, take about an hour or so. If it's fully cooled down, then you can come over to your overflow tank and check your level. If it's way down to low or it's, it's not even in the tank, fill it to the low level and then and run it some more. Never take your cap off with the radiator being hot or the engine reaching full temperature. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.